<laughs> so yeah, that didn't work. Let's try this one more time. I don't have all day, man. <laughs> Welcome back to Starting Now. I'm your host, Jeff Saris. And I'm Amara Andrew. And this is our special Saturday show whoop where whoop. I talk to Amara Happy Saturday. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this called? Uh, I think Spring Sprout Spress. 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 Spress, spress. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is not awake yet. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, and so, I can hear the echo. Yeah, so that is something that we will talk about uh, oh this is side hustle saturday <laughs> but i was thinking should this be side hustle saturday what else should it be i was thinking starting now it might be fun to have this show called starting saturday starting saturday yeah like, this is how silly. we start our saturday well also just that like i don't know we're all about starting right now mm -hmm. like getting started getting rolling getting going but every saturday like we're starting the new we are uh, documenting what... Has I cracked my I knuckles? I heard your knuckles. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're documenting what you're doing as... I feel like I'm still getting rolling too. So this is I'm... This is I am... Yeah, this, this is, is our me. Sleepy Saturday podcast. Yeah, speaking slowly. So I need to mm. ramp it up. I need to drink some of this here. Well, and um, it's kind of cloudy and gray. Yeah. So yeah. I guess that's why everybody in Seattle always drinks a bunch of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. What do you think about uh, starting Saturday? So Side Hustle Saturday works. But starting Saturday, we're sort of documenting what you're doing, what you're starting this week, what you've done this past week. And we're also diving into um, just stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah, we can. I don't know. I kind of like Side Hustle Saturday. Okay. But welcome back to Starting Saturday. I'm your host. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm fine with either. Well, well yeah. and like as we keep recording and uh, talking and everything, we'll like figure out kind of what we're doing. For so. sure. Or like what we should name this. Well, yeah. Because what about this is Simon Saturday. Simon? <laughs> Simon? <laughs> huh? Tortoise. I, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> it's funny because that'll be an inside joke that we can say on this podcast and not explain because it would take too long to explain. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. only Jim Jeffries might get it. Uh huh. Hi, Jim Jeffries. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have three listeners. One is Jim Jeffries. <laughs> that and would the other be two amazing. No, I'm kidding. a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what are we doing here? We are in this echoey room. Same set yes, as last week. But a little different. Can yeah. you spot the differences? <laughs> yeah, for anyone who's watching, you may see back here that it is a mess. We have all of our stuff <laughs> pushed over to this one wall. We just thought it would look nice aesthetically. Yeah, but we've been working on the flooring this week. So yeah. we've ripped up all but 3% of the carpet. Uh huh. We are... The shot that you can see on YouTube is where the flooring's done. So you see a bunch of blue tape and all sorts of things that are holding yeah, the joints together. Yeah, and over by me is where we still have some carpet. Um, and you and your dad have been doing this during the day. Oh, and, yeah, then, and then you help when you're done with work. Yeah, when I, as soon as I clock out, I clock in here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we've been getting that, uh, getting that rolling. Yeah. I'm really happy with it. It is funny, though, because it is so much more echoey. Oh, yeah. Like so much more. I can really hear it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're going so to have sound panels all over the uh -huh. ceiling. <laughs> sorry to whoever's listening and not watching. Because I feel like when you're watching, the echo isn't as bad. Well, but when you're you... only listening, it's different. And when you're watching it, like you know what's kind of going, like you just mm -hmm. have a better awareness of it or something. Like yeah, you and you have context it. for the frame of the room. The That's frame what of I the mean. room. Um, so yeah, we have high ceilings in here, which is awesome. Like mm -hmm. I'm really happy with them. But yeah, I can hear the sound bouncing off all the walls yeah well oh well <laughs> it looks so much better mm -hmm. just visually but yeah so we are here i feel like i'm looking at the camera to be like is it recording <laughs> but the light is right there and oh. i'm just looking at the screen just we don't normally face for we're trying some new things out here trying to figure out how to uh set up our little yeah scene. we took mushrooms before this so <laughs> we'll see how this goes no, we did not take mushrooms <laughs> says you <laughs> <laughs> surprise <laughs> but i still have my uh cold brew and topo chico lovely yeah i have agua fresca and you have your cold brew over there i can see it yeah just a tiny bit left i can see it way over there it's like <laughs> two feet away hello <laughs> um okay so should we start with unfinished tweets oh unfinished tweets or, unfinished headlines but i did want to address one thing nope as you see i am blocked by this big ass arm once again Oh, yeah. Because I ordered the stand, and it was supposed to show up by, like, Thursday. Uh -huh. It's uh, 
pending delivery. It's stuck in Indianapolis for some reason. Really? Here comes Kitty. Um, Hi, but yeah, I don't, I don't know why, but by next week, this should not be blocking and taking up so and much space. this should all look more normal again, yeah, but with nice. really nice flooring. Papa, shush. Hi, Kitty. We're going to hear you echo in here, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. Yeah. I can't um, wait to see how this turns out. Okay. So shall we do our first segment? Unfinished Headlines. It's time for Unfinished Headlines. <laughs> headlines. <laughs> headlines. <laughs> time for Unfinished Headlines. i like that you laugh so hard at that it's just me playing it back from what you said i was going to use one of the uh, tracks that we recorded last week Uh but the audio is definitely off like i had the volume on the music way too loud yeah and you can barely hear us like talking or singing and we're just gonna play with this for a little bit also we haven't had time i mean yeah we've been busy that is the topic that we'll be talking about in a minute once we get past our unfinished headlines but yeah yeah just time and like burnout and figuring out how to uh fit everything in that you want to do so unfinished headlines you have yours yes Alrighty, so we will start with you excellent (laughs) so yeah we can really hear him yeah and i don't think we could as much before but i think a lot of that was uh yeah, probably dampened by the sound of the, by the uh, carpet. Yeah. Well, so we'll see. We'll figure You're it out. You're going to hear a lot of kitty in these episodes. <laughs> yeah. Get ready. <laughs> All right. Okay. So what do you got for me? Seven countries where you can get a passport through blank. Alpha, no playing. <laughs> <laughs> Seven countries where you can get a passport through blank. Mm-hmm. What can you do? For a Klondike bar. <laughs> you can get a passport through your anal cavity. Is that your final answer? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, also, I think that's two words. <laughs> Unless you <laughs> It's not one it. word. <laughs> anal hyphen cavity. <laughs> um, so one more time. Seven countries where? Where you can get a passport through blank. I really don't know. I have, I don't know. Yeah, I <laughs> that was gross. <laughs> yeah, now Sorry. that you have your volume up, you can hear. <laughs> Seven countries where you can get a passport through ancestry. Oh, interesting. So less uh, less racy than maybe it seemed like it was going to be. But... Yeah, so you can get uh, your passport just because someone else lived there or is from there. Yeah, your ancestry. As long as you can prove it, so. Hmm. I could be a, a citizen of so many countries, <laughs> like a ton. But most of them in Eastern Europe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much all the same. Hello, my people. Prost. <laughs> this is just vodka. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was a good one. Mine is okay this week. I don't love it. Yeah, but mine was fine. But Yeah, I have a blank in here. It is kind of We're hard gonna... to keep up with this. Yeah, we were so... talking about this before off camera. or Before off camera. Yeah, before, um, but off air where... We were just saying like, yeah, it's actually difficult to find ones that are like laugh out loud funny or really interesting or something. Like these are fine, but they're well, yeah, not. Yeah, we want it to be really not always, shocking too. Yeah. But in the first two weeks, I just so happened to come across things that I was like, that oh, was this is perfect. Good. Um, but yeah, when I'm actually seeking it out. So we may not do unfinished headlines every week. Yeah, we might switch um, it up. But we need to, we're going to build in a few other uh, silly segments. I just know we will. Oh, yeah. So, um <clears throat> He's starting a lawnmower over there. (laughs) So this has a blank in the middle of the sentence. Ooh, my favorite. Middle blank. Meet the woman who (laughs) blank on Singapore trains. Um, well, you know where my mind goes. Has a fun time. No. (laughs) Has a fun time Um, on Singapore trains. Meet a woman who blinks on Singapore trains. Mm -hmm. Is it just one word? No. There are three words. Meet a woman who... It's a verb and uh, two words. Hmm. Alpha, Alpha, stop now. Shut up. <laughs> God, I'm thinking. Meet a woman who blanks on mm. Singapore trains. 
makes uh makes alcoholic or makes fresh alcohol on Singapore trains. Final answer? <laughs> or yeah, distills something. Yeah. Distills alcohol on on Singapore trains. Yeah. I like where you're where you're going with that, but this one is a little different. Meet the woman who reads giant books on Singapore trains. Why the fuck is that a headline? Because um, I want you to look at the photo and read what some of the titles of these books are. Uh oh. Okay, so <laughs> describe the oh. scene. <laughs> so it's <laughs> literally a giant book. Yeah, probably about three <laughs> feet tall. It looks like those uh, like giant greeting cards, if you've ever seen those, where it looks like a gag, because this looks definitely like a gag. Um, they are not visually appealing, but it has huge font, so like you are meant to read the titles. So she looks amazing, by the way. I love her <laughs> star sunglasses and her like Picasso-looking kind of skirt. Um, one of the titles, or here are the titles, How to Hide Your Insanity. How to Endure Idiots, and How to Spot a Fuckboy. <laughs> <laughs> and I like I how, love to, it. how to Endure Idiots. I really like because like on the train also. Well, yeah, she's clearly calling everybody an idiot. Uh-huh. I so love I her. That was pretty good. Let's see. Is this another She's one? my role model. <laughs> and here she's just like sleeping. How to transfer money from my mind to my bank. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, okay. But yeah, I thought that was an interesting... Uh, that was an unexpected headline for me. I like that. I like that she just does it. Like I wonder I wonder if she's just all day on the trains or like if she's taking the trains to work or something. Like could you imagine if I know you work like on your own, but like if I was taking the train and somebody that I work with was on the train and I just had this giant fucking book, I think that would raise a lot of questions. Uh-huh. I don't know. I would be thinking like what if somebody sees me doing this, but then I'd be like, "Eh, you're offended oh well well yeah and that's the fun of it too i mean that, yeah. that's what she's going for is to like get a rise out of people. i like it it's yeah. funny uh-huh. i think it's really silly yeah so, I like not her. As, so a little we'll have unexpected. her on the podcast next week there you no. go <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing please read us all of your titles <laughs> <laughs> i love it um oh i meant to put us on instagram but yeah i want to dive into this topic this week because we were talking about burnout we were talking about as i hold up my phone to read it and you hold up your phone to uh, take a video so what are you doing Hello. We're recording a new episode of Side Hustle Saturday. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Every week we're recording. Woohoo. So tune in. Oop. Well, cut uh, you off. <laughs> but yeah. So this week I wanted to uh, talk about, yeah, we were talking about big picture versus small picture and burnout and anxiety and all these things earlier this week because yes. like we've noticed just so many people who have oh, yeah. been like feeling that yeah tons of people and it feels exacerbated by the pandemic and everything because you're just like trapped in your house and with your thoughts and everything and you can only do so many activities to take your mind off of stuff before you have to uh get in touch with your real feelings and how you're truly feeling <laughs> and it feels like a lot of uh, creators right oh for sure like exclusively yeah i like, mean i guess those are the people who are seeing create the content that would say they're anxious oh well, yeah those are the people that we over want to hear from <laughs> yeah over <laughs> burnt out overburned. i was gonna say overburned <laughs> that's only in the summer. just like a pizza <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so it seems like a lot of creators are getting burnt out and oh, yeah. all these things which i don't blame them i mean oh, it's, yeah. it can be challenging but like there are ways to not get burnt out, I think, as well. Well, yeah, and there's the balance because we've seen a lot in the like, productivity space mm-hmm. where people are like, oh, these, these are sort of the eight simple ways to this or do that or do that. But then all of a sudden they're also burnt out. Yeah, and then they're just like, oh, God, I'm so burnt out, which then it's like, well, are your ways that you're being productive actually helping you? Like, is that actually productivity? Because in my mind, then that's anti-productive but well, it depends i guess on your goal and like mm-hmm. what you are trying to achieve like uh it could be like financial freedom if that's your goal then you're gonna have a different like it all depends on essentially what you're trying to get out of it well yeah and i think the i think the challenge which is what we were talking about like earlier in the week is productivity will start as as a tool it starts as a tool to be better at what we're doing. So I'm, I'm going to be more productive so I can make more money, so I can do better with my business. I can do whatever. I can achieve more. Mm-hmm. But at times, I think productivity becomes the end. 
And that's when when it's a recipe for burnout. Right. Because yeah, we hit we hit the point where it's like, oh, so I'm going to be more productive today than I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And when that's why exactly like, what are you productive for? And are you going to actually be more productive? Because I feel like having that structured like, oh, well, I didn't do it today. So I'm going to punish myself tomorrow and put everything I was going to do today tomorrow. Like that sounds horrible because then you're going to dread tomorrow. You're going to hate your life and then you're just going to keep pushing stuff off because if you keep pushing it off, in my mind, like from me, obviously you don't want to do it then because that's mm-hmm. like you will want to do stuff and like you're going to do it if you actually want to do it. And that's sort of the thing, pushing things off. So I am pro pushing things off. And that's mm-hmm. sort of what I wanted to talk about is our time and mm-hmm. figuring out what is the best use of our time for ourselves. Yeah. Like how do we want to, <laughs> Mr. Kitty is going to be a little noisy cat. Yeah. Um Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> almost knocked over the couch um okay you gotta be quiet Alpha he's like i don't know what you guys are doing um okay so but being um figuring out how you want to use your time what you want to sort of set aside and and let pass you by so for me being timely and having a schedule and yeah. being being on time for things is something that i push away Mm-hmm. Like I try to be on time, but if it's going, <laughs> if that's what you call it, <laughs> but no. if it's at the detriment to how I'm feeling, what I'm doing, like what I want to get out of my day, mm-hmm. that's what gets pushed. So even when it comes to doing things, so like every Thursday for myself, I have to release a podcast. That's what I decided. Thursday is my release day. As we talked about this, week, we were working on the floor. Mm-hmm. So I was go. I didn't realize it at first, but. I had to catch up on the Kidney Stone Diet podcasts because this week was the the first of the next batch that I had to release. So there were five episodes we recorded last week. And what I did Monday, worked on the floor and all day, finished working on that, went to my computer, started working and edited all five podcasts, mm-hmm. then went to sleep, woke up and worked on the floor. And yeah. Went to my computer and started doing other work I had to do. And then I was realizing, okay, I, I'm feeling burnt out. Like Mm -hmm. I just, and I didn't realize for me that, oh, it's because I didn't give myself a moment to like, to do the things that I, because I want to edit the podcast. I want to do that. But I didn't give myself a moment to like, just be me, just be. Yeah. That's how I've kind of felt this week as well. Cause like we're doing the, so like I wake up, I start my job and then it's like, oh, okay. Well, normally after I'm like done working, then I have like a little bit of time and like I make dinner and then we eat and then. I can work on other stuff, but it's been like, like finish working, then come in, work on the floor, then make dinner. And then like, I'm too tired to do anything else. So I haven't really, which we'll talk about this later, but I haven't made as much progress on my side hustle stuff as I would like to. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually feeling a little bit behind just because of all this. So yeah, it's like, it's that internal pressure where it's like, oh no, I need to do this. And like, I want to do it, um, oh, yeah. but it's just, yeah, I've, haven't been feeling i'd like don't have the time to this week well i think that's what leads to the anxiety yeah so like you have the internal pressure the weight on your shoulders that's self-imposed like Mm -hmm. you placed it there like i placed it there so tuesday we released the kidney stone diet the first of the five that i edited Mm -hmm. thursday was my uh yeah two days ago was my episode so for starting now for this podcast the main interview show and i could have worked on it wednesday night Mm mm-hmm but I was, I just wasn't feeling like doing it. Like, yeah. and then I just thought, I was like, I don't need to release it. Like I could push this off. This is an in, this is, this is a schedule that I set for myself. There's no, there's people listening, mm-hmm. but if I don't post in a week, no harm, no foul. Like nobody cares. Well, it's like, not it the end of the world. Well, yeah. Like, like I appreciate everyone listening and I appreciate sort of the community that's building like around the show. But oh, at the yeah. same time, no one's going to be like, Oh, you weren't here on th- at Thursday at nine a.m. or whenever I scheduled well, yeah, also, for. Also, if it's to your detriment, like mm-hmm. to your mental or physical health or something, then don't do it. Well, yeah, like and that's it. Feels simple, but I know it can be difficult because in your mind you have that internal pressure on yourself. Oh yeah, and I think that's where we need to find the balance. So what I ended up doing is I wasn't going to publish on Thursday. Yeah, that was gonna. I was just going to skip it, do other things. But then I woke up and thought, no, you know, I'm going to edit 
now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to edit this episode. It's a shorter one that I was going to publish anyway. So I can go through, do the, ed the video edit and everything, get it uploaded by the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And it worked out. Like, I think it worked out well. Yeah. Because I was able to stay on schedule, but I had already given myself the freedom not to do it. Yeah. I just said like, oh, I'll, I can just do it next week. Mm -hmm. There's no no burden anymore and as soon as the burden was lifted that's when i think i said oh but i want to do it like i want it this one out there this week for yeah. whatever reason well yeah um and i think that's important i think it's very important but how do we find that like how do you find that balance of when when is this for me when is this good for me mm -hmm. and when is this hindering me yeah well i think like burnout is a sign of that where if you are feeling like oh i have to get this done but you don't want to and like i said like you keep pushing it off like i think that's a great sign of like well no like you shouldn't be doing this then like maybe um or you have other things in your life that you need to put attention to or something like that so and i think who are you doing it for because yeah. is or this... what are you doing it for you yeah mean? or yeah that's yeah what or who because like, i feel combined. like a lot of people get caught up in it where they are just like, no, I need to keep making more money because I need to now pay the 10 employees that I just hired. And like all these, like I need to pay for the space that I just got. Do you actually need those 10 employees? Do you need that new space? Do you need this? Do you need that? Like, I feel like a lot of creators, they could just like, they got their hits. They like made all their money. They could just like cut and run and just like retire with a nice little chunk of change that they got. But instead, I feel like they kind of get caught up in it because also too, it is ego in a way where it's like, mm -hmm. well, no, like people are paying attention to me and listening to me. So I don't know. I feel like you can get caught up in that. Well, yeah. I mean, I have no idea because obviously I'm, I'm not famous, so I don't know. Well, but... no, but you want it to keep growing. So like real yeah. quick on the money. But then is... like for what? Like yeah, why? Exactly. And like you mentioned, they could cut and run. Mm hmm we're assuming like that that's how money. i would be personally it feels like there would be a lot of money but i know for a lot of creators the money comes in and goes out right away because yeah. of not because of necessarily bad decisions mm -hmm. but just this stuff costs money i mean whether it's oh, yeah. gear whether it's um hosting for a wet like there's all mm -hmm. these things that add up that do cost money so it always feels like there should be more money available but right. really what we're talking about is minimalist business like is it yeah that's exactly what we do. no but really i mean like you laugh, but that is the whole sort of premise of what we do and like the show and like mm -hmm. everything is Spire, like the business, the company that it's me and Dave. There's two of us. That's our entire company. Mm -hmm. And we do everything. Like yeah. we don't send anything out. We don't farm anything out. Our overhead is very low, mm -hmm. but that means we don't need to make that much money. Right. Like when you add an employee, one employee, if you're going to pay them 60 grand a year, that costs you five thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. and then then the question is okay will that person give a return of more than five thousand dollars because if they don't why are they there are exactly. they there for ego like mm -hmm. you mentioned are they there because my friends built this and i need to have employees i need to get here well yeah or it could just be like helping? oh look i'm a sea level exec mm -hmm. of my own company and i have all these people that work under me like i mean that could also be it like i'm not trying to shit talk anybody no we're just trying to figure out um, like because I, we see it happen it happens a lot because oh, yeah. with each employee like sixty thousand is a is a nice salary yeah but if you're an independent creator like person trying to give someone a full-time salary you can't go too much lower than that i don't think mm -hmm. because that person who you're hiring yeah, knows contingent that it's, upon where you live and everything like you might even need 80k or more maybe but also like you have to pay them enough for them to be comfortable with the discomfort of knowing like oh hey this month this year i can have this job next year things could change like this is one person that i'm supporting i'm doing work they're paying me i'm doing work to help build their maybe personal brand and also too though the uncertainty is for any job like we've talked about oh, a bunch yeah. too where it's like oh yeah is this actually <laughs> worth my time mm -hmm. like um yeah that's a whole other tangent but but yeah and so just figuring out where why are you growing like what yeah. are you, what, what are, are you growing, growing for exactly yeah. like what is your end goal like 
not that you have to constantly just work toward this one specific goal, but like, what, why? Well, like, this is the perfect thing, the perfect transition trip, because what yeah. I wanted to talk about was the small picture versus big picture. Mm -hmm. And the way that we do things at Spire mm -hmm. is big picture. Yeah. So this podcast makes no money. We've made money as a result of the a podcast. <laughs> Here, I'll Venmo you. <laughs> but we've made money as a result of the podcast. Yeah. The kidney stone diet makes no money, mm -hmm. the podcast. But we've made more money, built a bigger audience, built a bigger email list because of the podcast. Right. So it's one of the things that feed into it. But I mean, starting now, I don't need to be doing this. It doesn't, there is no direct anything for it. Like we've made some money, but it's mostly from reconnecting with people we've done work with. So what am I doing it for? Mm -hmm. I'm not recording these shows to be like, oh, next week, next month, I'll make a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, 10,000, like nothing like that. It's just, I want to build this framework for the future mm -hmm. because like I see where we're at now. We live behind this. We've lived behind the scenes forever mm -hmm. for so many years that no one knows who we are. And then we can keep doing that. We can keep helping build the kidney stone diet, help the minimalists, help um, these other people that we work with building their platforms. But what if one day they slow, because this will happen, mm -hmm. they'll slowly start pulling back and being like, you know, we don't want, we don't want this anymore yeah. out of our life. I'm going to close this business. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to change in these ways where our partnership, we don't really need to have the partnership anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, then suddenly, what do we have? You shit out of luck. Well, yeah, we have what we did, but we don't have any community or framework. So like yeah, building, you're building your brand. Yeah, building the brand, but also just thinking the big picture. So that's why I don't feel like I get burnt out. I felt in the micro, mm -hmm. I get burnt out in terms of this week. I was just like going, going, going and realized, oh, for 48 hours, I either worked or slept Yeah, and ate in between. Mm -hmm. But like, other than that, it was too much. And I think the problem becomes when when we're looking at the small picture too much, that's why we burn out and get anxiety and things because... If I'm feeling stressed right now mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do these things to help me feel better and jump right back on the treadmill tomorrow doing the same thing that made me feel like this. I think that's the major problem Yeah, is we need to look at, okay, what I'm doing today doesn't, this is for, this is how we run it. So this is, this is obviously just my perspective on things. It's not the way to do it, but Oh, yeah, what I'm the whole world is perspective. Like exactly. honestly, that's all it is. So But yeah, what I'm doing today will is this for the long term. If it's only for the immediate, if this is only like I do this now and it either works or doesn't, yeah. For me, that's the wrong path. Like if I'm You mean like if it's immediate, like I'm gonna do this just to get a hundred bucks or something? Or? So yeah, sort of. Like I'm going let's say I'm gonna create this awesome Instagram post. Mm-hmm. We know Instagram or Twitter, it's like ephemeral. You put it out there and it's sort of just gone. Yeah. So like that's very possible. Like you can do that. That's not a problem. But if you're relying on that one thing to do something for you, mm -hmm. that's where I think the problem lies and where the anxiety comes in. Like it's too small picture. Yeah. Where if it's like, oh, every week, every day, whatever, I'm posting good Instagram stories, Instagram photos. Because in six months, 12 months, 24 months, I know this is going to help me in these ways. Mm -hmm. Then I think that's the right path. And I think that keeps you from burning out. Yeah. Do you feel like you've been able to pull away? Because like you're just starting. Mm -hmm. But this week you didn't post a video. Yeah. It it was definitely like back here the whole week. Like uh -huh. you got to fucking do it. You're going <laughs> to fall behind. Because, you know, someone else isn't taking the week off or whatever. But... That's what we hear from other, like, more, way more well-established and more popular creators is that, like, oh, I couldn't take this week off because I had to keep posting, which then it's like, well, if I'm actually enjoying not posting a video this week, like, I I just didn't fucking feel like it either. Well, you just so, didn't have the opportunity either because, no. like, like, we literally were doing this but in all your downtime. If I really wanted to, I could have made it happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I could have stretched myself thinner than I already was. <laughs> nice and thin um <laughs> but like i could have done that and just like totally just tired myself out and made myself feel really ragged and everything and i could have done it but i chose not to because to me that didn't have as much value as like 
being able to just hang out at the end of the day after dinner or something and just mm -hmm. like rest <laughs> like that's okay you, you, you can do it well yeah it's very important but it's so hard it's so difficult oh because yeah because constantly as we're like sitting here like when we were, we were watching action park last night i was thinking like class action park or yeah class action park <laughs> i was thinking like okay so i gotta do this i need to do this i have to do this like i want to do this i need to get this posted i need to do that and then you need to start posting instagram more and have more engaging content and teach people things and like that's just constantly running through my head all the time which I don't like because it feels like I need to do it, not I want to mm -hmm. in some respects. Yeah. Like and there is a balance, of course. Like we have to have oh, yeah. the things we must do that we don't want to. Yeah. But like not to change the subject, but right now Instagram is a problem for me because I don't really have. <laughs> You're a problem, Instagram. <laughs> Hi, my name's Amara and I have a problem with Instagram. <laughs> um, but it's a huge problem for me because I personally... I'm not thinking ahead on what kind of content can I post there, nor do I feel like I'm getting the levels of engagement I'd like, just like everybody always says ever. Um, but it's because I'm not putting in the effort and I'm not aiming for it because I know kind of like, oh, well, the algorithm is geared more toward this or like, I don't know. It just... I it, think beyond that too, though, how much do you want it? How much do you want Instagram to be like your platform? Yeah, that doesn't really matter to me. Like, I just want to have a platform. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm putting, like, most of my energy into YouTube. Like, Etsy as well, but that's different. Um, yeah, Etsy is, Etsy is sort of the small revenue stream, the business yeah. side currently. Yeah, like, but, that's yeah. where I'm making money currently. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like, YouTube is definitely where I'm putting my energies into. But it feels, yeah, I don't know. Yada, yada, yada. No, that's perfect. <laughs> I was just looking at my phone and just made sure. No, that's fine. I looked at the different. No, I like, uh, I forgot where points. I was going with that <laughs> thought. So, but yeah, like I want to make videos that people enjoy and get value out of and everything. And yeah. I think how I'm viewing like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter now is just my, like my, here's what I made, but I don't want to just constantly be doing that because I find it annoying just in myself. Like, oh, oh I'm yeah. just constantly being like, hey, check out this that I made or hey, check out this. But as I see it, it is helpful to people. Like there is helpful information in the videos because I'm just showing, oh, this is how I do this or this is how I do that or maybe try this or, or whatever. Or entertainment. Yeah. I mean, this is, this show is a little, this episode is more serious than the other ones. Yeah. But like, I But we're getting I to like the root this, of it. Yeah, I like this show, <laughs> like just having the conversations with you because it's more entertainment mm -hmm. than just sort well, of Oh yeah, it's data. not like a playbook. Like here, do this, this, and this. Yeah. Because that's so not me. Well, and the rest of my, like the interviews, I don't feel like are a playbook either, but they're an no. interview. It's like a different thing where here we just, we well, can yeah, it's play a different relationship. and have fun. Yeah. Because yeah, if we go off topic, then it's fine. Uh -huh. Like it's just, it's different. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so those are like the three social medias um, that I referenced. Like those are just my ways of getting my message out there and like letting people know, hey, this exists. But I am so not good with being on social media because I kind of don't care what other people post for the most yeah. part. You're or, not a consumer of social media. Not so at all. I've always be been creator. people from like high school. If, if you're watching this, like, you know how much I absolutely fucking hated social media. And I was like, I'm never going to be on it. Like, bye suckers. You're never going to see me again. And then here I am with a bunch of social media accounts uh -huh. and I had a TikTok that totally blew up and yeah. it was just so weird. But I've, but see, I've is... always been very not social media minded and I I don't get how people are addicted to it because like I open it for two seconds and I'm like, eh, whatever. Yeah, but we're just we're geared differently because that's how I am. Too. Oh, yeah. And like no fault if other people get oh, total yeah, enjoyment sure. out of it. Like that's awesome. And so I have a question. You have YouTube, mm -hmm. TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Let's say those four. Yeah. How would you rank them and how much you like them? And like on a scale. So if you, so you out of TikTok, 10. TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Yeah. So out of 10, a 10 being how much you like it or liking it a lot. So I like TikTok immediately. Like at the start of the pandemic, that was like, I would spend hours scrolling through it because I got so much enjoyment out of Sorry, it. Sorry, as a creator though. How much oh, do you like those four stuff? as as the person creating for the platforms? So I like the 60 second time frame because I was doing 60 second art history videos where uh -huh. I would only have 60 seconds to tell you as much as I could fit in there. So like tweaking the scripts and like just changing it as I was recording and everything like that was really fun. But it was a lot of work for 
just likes and stuff and people like I loved the community that I built there as well though like that was honestly probably the best part um but but I want to compare the four to one another yeah currently how I feel about all them as a creator I think YouTube is probably the top for me okay um I don't have a one through ten I'm just gonna rank them in order okay um YouTube I would say because that's my goal right now so I would, that's why I'm putting YouTube at the top. Mm-hmm. And then I'd say Instagram is probably the bottom. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to be honest, tied with Twitter. I don't know. I'm, I personally don't get much fulfillment out of Twitter. Um, but that's just me. Like as a creator, well, I'm yeah. just like, nobody needs to hear my thoughts. Like I don't think anything interesting. Um, so Instagram and Twitter and then maybe TikTok. And then YouTube. Yeah. So, like so bottom to top. YouTube is the top, followed by TikTok. How close are YouTube and TikTok versus the closeness of TikTok and Twitter? So YouTube and TikTok are far up here, and Twitter and Instagram are toward the bottom of the barrel. I'm leading you around along on this because why like, are you leading me along? Do you <laughs> hear this? This is exactly that's how I thought you would respond. You know? Um, yeah. So the reason though, like I think of Twitter and Instagram as tools, but I think of TikTok and YouTube as being my creative outlet. Like I like making creative uh, photos for Instagram, but I don't, I don't feel the same return on, oh, I took a lot of time to figure out how to light this or get the composition right or anything. And also I don't want to have to only post that because I know that that's what like people like to be able to predict stuff. Like that's why movies are so fucking predict. That's why everything's so predictable because it's like, oh, it's comfortable. Like I know what to expect. Expect. Well, yeah. Yeah, expectations. expectations. We're back to expectations. <laughs> we always talk about it. But what I just wanted to say real quick yeah. is YouTube Going TikTok on <laughs> versus Twitter Instagram. Mm-hmm. They're big picture versus small picture platforms. Twitter and Instagram, you post it and you know it's going to be gone. Yeah. You're, you don't... Like immediately. Yeah, like I so don't even think anybody's ever going to see anything. If you post consistently on Twitter, you're going to build an amazing audience right now. But the consistency is is the key it's not one tweet isn't going to resurface in a month two months six months three years but (laughs) like you you pull away you're still in line with the mic so i still hear your nose (laughs) i I heard it i was like i hope no one else heard that (laughs) um (laughs) like you're in line with the mic you you have to go over here see over here you don't i mean i could over to the side you don't hear it as much (laughs) (laughs) sorry (laughs) but I just wanted to say big picture, small picture. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But YouTube and TikTok, <laughs> anything you post today, anything you posted three months ago, people can still see it today. Yeah. It'll still come up in the algorithm. It'll be recommended for different reasons. And I think that's why you like them more because I'll put the time in to Twitter or to uh, YouTube because I'm going to post it today. Maybe four people will see it. But mm. maybe tomorrow, 12 more will see it. In three months, Holy 10, shit. 15, 20 more will see you it. You just blew my mind. Because <laughs> that is it. Like, I'm willing to put in... Like, I stayed up until 2 a.m. one night to finish editing a video that uh-huh. I didn't even end up posting the next day. I posted it the next, next day. Uh-huh. Um, and only got, like, six hours of sleep before I had to, like, wake up. Or five, whatever. Um, but I was willing to put in that time. Whereas with Instagram or Twitter, it's like, yeah, whatever. Like, it... It feels more fleeting and ephemeral. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fleets. Um, yeah, it just, it doesn't feel like it has that same long-term value mm-hmm. that, yeah, like you said, like YouTube and TikTok, like it'll always be there and it'll constantly just be like offered to people. Yeah, so. That's interesting. Well, that's why I wanted to talk about this just because it is the big picture, small picture. And I think you feel better because of the big picture approach. And so, it feels more creative just for mm-hmm. me. Like, well, yeah. I don't know. Well, because you put in the time so then people will see it. Because if you did, if you spent nine hours on an Instagram post, like drawing, like illustrate, doing all these things mm-hmm. that wasn't going to Etsy, wasn't going elsewhere, like that's gone a few hours after you post it. Like exactly. gone and it's on, it's in your profile, but people aren't scrolling through profiles. They're scrolling no. through their feed. Yeah. So like people who are new will look at your profile and be like, oh, I like these things. I will subscribe like i will follow this person to see the future stuff they post Mm -hmm. i'm not going back and looking at everything so it's just it's a different dynamic and i think that is so interesting so i think that's the key to it feels like you have to work 
so much harder on Instagram and Twitter mm-hmm. than you like you do have to work hard for YouTube and TikTok, but it feels like you get more payoff or like more longevity out of your pieces mm-hmm. than if you're just posting to Instagram or Twitter, then it's like, oh, okay, cool. I saw that next. Yeah, it's like, a long-term strategy. So like yeah. you, you haven't grown like your business no. like, like you want. Like, because it's just, I still don't even know what it is. Well, yeah, we're going still to figuring be. it out, but that's why I, like, I always lean on like, just, just patience with this because six months, like it is hard though. Cause no, like, I, know, I, for sure. I have that, like we've talked about, like I have that internal pressure in me. Like, why aren't you being more successful? Like you're being a lazy piece of shit. Like, why aren't you doing better? Why aren't you doing more? Do, do, do. And it's like, mm-hmm. Hey friend, let's just calm down. Like, just sit on the couch, enjoy some little rice krispies or something. <laughs> rice hang krispies. Out. I don't know. I was just thinking. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> cocoa crispy <laughs> cereal. Maybe they're gluten free. I don't know. But we oh, don't eat rice krispies. Oh, we have the Whole Foods brand. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's important. So I mean, it's not like this isn't the answer for burnout or anxiety or stress. But I think it's something important to look at. Be like, okay, what what am I focusing on? How am I approaching my days even if it is an entrepreneurship if it's mm-hmm. just life in general yeah is everything i'm doing just keeping me afloat mm-hmm. or am i doing something that i feel a return on in the long term for me everything right. i do is a business it, it's, i love entrepreneurship yeah so like i don't that's why I, I, I probably said it on the show but like i don't have hobbies i have businesses that's uh-huh. what i would always say i started oh, yeah. photography i shot weddings i did portraits i was interested in health and wellness. I became a health coach. I had a blog, all these things. Mm -hmm. And that just happens over time because that's just what I, sort of my North Star is, okay, how can I turn this into something to make my life better in the long term? Well, yeah, and what do you want to do all the time? Like, what do you want to do with your day? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to do certain things, so don't do them. And like one example, like three years tends to be, like, it's not always, it doesn't take three years always, but once people get three years in or platforms, I don't want to say it's inevitable, but if someone's making good strides, so they're, they're taking things in the direction of like their compass. They've mm-hmm. calibrated where they want to go and what they want to do. Three years is pretty consistently oh, yeah. how long it like, takes even for if people it to would look like it. garbage, like people will still... If as long as it's entertaining, then people will be like, "Oh, I want to like follow like or whatever it is." Yeah. So like entertainment, or if it's education, like it's, it's something. But there's something about that three year mark because like kidney stone diet, mm-hmm. we've been working on that behind the scenes and helping Jill grow for, yeah, for like, over three years. Yeah. But it wasn't until the three year point that we really started. Like, okay, I can't believe it's it, been that long. Yeah, it hit its stride. So we weren't making money again. Small picture, big picture. We weren't investing to be like, okay, we're investing our time to say we're going to get a return tomorrow or next month or this Mm -hmm. year. Like we put in a good 18 to 24 months of not making enough to break even in terms of our time. We were, we were getting some revenue, some shared revenue, but we were putting in thousands of dollars more of time than we were on the, on the income. Oh yeah. And we're still not making a ton of money on it, but Jill is now to the spot where we wanted to get her. Like our well, goal. Yeah, it's comfortable now. Well, yeah. And we were like, now we have the steady income for all of us. Hers is like the proper salary and things like the area of revenue where she should be. Yeah. Like what she's creating, she should be making at least this amount. And now we're making enough where it makes sense for us to be building this. Mm-hmm. But it all d- just takes time. So like the three years, like I talked to Tom Buck on this show. Mm-hmm. He started in 2017. In 2020, things just miraculously like popped. Yeah. Suddenly, you went from like a good following to constant growth, just steady over time. Mm-hmm. All these finance guys that we see on YouTube, and it's not all about creators and YouTube and stuff. Because Jill, she has her closed group, but really, what I'm talking about is three years for the revenue and the business and the machinations to like really sink into that spot. Like, oh, we found it now. This is yeah. where it belongs. This is how. We can help the most people mm-hmm. and people see that and want to to hand over their money to be a part of this because it's going to help them. Mm-hmm. And that just takes time. Yeah, you like you find your flow at that certain marker in time or something. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. yeah so that's yeah. interesting. So this was all just just to talk about that big picture, small picture. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we should probably Yeah, I think uh, that's super important. Yeah, and I think we should probably start to wrap there. I'm gonna get this whole table situated next week. 
yeah. Because now we're also a little wobbly because we have yeah, the... Sorry. Um, no, no, no. It's not you. It's the it's on carpet floating over, um, not flooring, and then um, kind on the Kind of on wood. flooring. Yeah. So, yeah. So, thanks again for listening to Side Hustle Saturday or yeah. Starting Saturday or Starting Now or the Amara Andrews Show Ooh, or whatever. Let's call it that. Okay. Yeah. From now on, <laughs> I'll rebrand all of it. <laughs> Welcome back to the Amara Andrew, Andrews Show. I'm your host, Jeff Sarris. So, yeah, I'm going to interview. <laughs> perfect. I love it. Even it when you're not on the show. <laughs> uh-huh. Perfect. But, yeah. So, yeah. We just want to, like, for you, I want you to do this too, but I want, like, everyone out there just to... Like, start thinking about the big picture of where you want to be. and What's your end goal? And is your end goal going to actually help you and serve you? Yeah, and lean into that. Mm -hmm. Like, figure out... You're calibrating your compass. So there's not a map to get there, but you're calibrating where you want to be and what you want to do. And start taking strides to get there. But but know you need some time. Like, it's, it's going to take time to keep building and growing and doing. But the more you do, the more opportunity will come. And if you love it, you won't even think about it. Yeah. So yeah, thanks again for listening. If you enjoy yeah, the show, thanks, be guys. sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Check it out on YouTube. The video is on Amara's YouTube channel. You can go to amara.me slash YouTube to find it. Come on over. <laughs> and yeah, I think that'll do it for or this Or if you're week. here, hi. <laughs> if you're here, hi. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Okay, cool. Whoa. Well, yeah, I think that'll do it for this week. So thanks again for listening. Okay, bye. See ya. <laughs>